I express my gratitude and immense uh, heartfelt thanks to Dr. Bansi Sabu sir and the members organizing committee Diacon Care 2022 for holding this uh, prestigious conference. And um, I'm really um, honored to speak on the topic, uh, clinical practice in uh, prevention uh, of um, uh, diabetic foot complications, a very important topic. And uh, Diabetic foot disease is in, indeed a very important disease and the major complication uh, of diabetes mellitus uh, with a very high uh, rising yearly incidence rate. And um, it's always diabetic foot ulcer is always in a state of remission with very high recurrence rates. And um, uh, to prevent uh, diabetic foot disease, we, uh, we have to reduce the risk to the patients and also reduce the economic, socioeconomic burden. And um, uh, so this is of paramount importance. Now, the various key contributory factors for diabetic foot complications, they include the uh, rising age in the, in the male population, the increasing duration of uh, diabetes, it's more common in the males. And um, with increasing age, the risk of ulcers and amputations also increases. It's more common in the Hispanics, Na Native American individuals of African Caribbean uh, descent. And a history of repetitive minor trauma to which patient may be unaware. It may be by a um, ill-fitting shoe or a bitchy in the feet of an Indian female or, um, uh, you know, something uh, they're walking in the temples or a foreign body may get impacted inside the foot and uh, or it may hit the penetrate the foot. So, and also past history of um, ulceration in the foot or history of amputation in the foot puts it uh, to the risk of uh, diabetic foot disease. And uh, both are considered to be the major risk factors. The annual incidence of ulceration may be as high as 30 to 50%. Other microvascular complications uh, of diabetes, such as retinopathy, uh, nephropathy, all stages, especially the end, are end stage renal diseases and the dialysis patients are at a very high risk in the transplant uh, patients, with the, whether it's a simultaneous kidney pancreas transplant because of the immunosuppressants that are given. So it may lead to diabetes and the, uh, its complications. The distal uh, sensory motor neuropathy, which occurs as a result of diabetes due to small fiber nerve dis uh, dysfunction, large fiber dis dysfunction, charcoal neuroarthropathy, uh, that's a painless, painful foot, which is non-superative inflammatory condition, motor neuropathy, and they, they occur in the time-dependent fashion and uh, due to uh, uncontrolled glycemic um, uh, uncontrolled glycemia. The autonomic neuropathy uh, leads to decreased sweating, fissuring, increased risk of field fissures, callus formation, and increasing the ulcer risk. The peripheral arterial disease, a combination of neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease, may give rise to neuro ischemic ulceration, the incidence of which is increasing in the current times uh, compared to 50% of neuropathic ulcer, 30% of neuro ischemia, which is rising continuously, and even 10% of the pure ischemic ulcers. The presence of deformity of the clotose, hematos, charcoal foot deformities, chahalex valgus, alex varus deformity, post-ulcer deform, post-amputation uh, deformity, they all increase the ulcer risk in these patients. So when we look at this causative uh, pathways uh, of um, ulceration and uh, foot at risk, uh, we can see that somatic sensory neuropathy, which uh, occurs as a result of hyperglycemia, gives rise to decreased pain sensation, temperature sensation, and proper, defective proprioception, uh, making the patient vulnerable to trauma and putting the foot at risk to the foot ulceration. Similarly, new motor neuropathy gives rise to intrinsic mi minus foot, the introsia, the lumbricals, and the intrinsic muscles of the foot may get wasted, leading to foot deformities, which is a very high, uh, which is a very important factor in the causation of foot ulcers and puts the foot at risk to trauma. Uh, the autonomic neuropathy, which again, as I said, leads to dryness of skin or cirrhosis of the plantar skin, decreased sweating, callus predisposes to callus formation, fissuring in the skin, and gauge dry veins, which uh, and gauge veins, which can be on the top, seen on the top of the foot, and puts the foot at risk and leads to foot ulceration. Uh, in addition to immunopathy, which is uh, which occurs in the background of hyperglycemia. Not all patients with diabetes are fortunately not all feet with di diabetic feet are at risk of foot ulceration. And um, uh, however, the incidence of diabetic foot ulceration is very low or unexpected in the absence of these risk factors. So uh, for a foot to be at risk, the diabetic sh should have either loss of protective sensation or presence of peripheral arterial disease or other factors such as foot deformity, uh, history of 
prior diabetic foot ulceration, history of lower extremity amputation, presence of renal disease uh, in the patient. All these risk factors may be uh, may put the foot at risk for ulceration. So uh, we have to pro uh, prevent these ulceration to prevent the mortality, mo increasing mortality, morbidity associated with the disease, and uh, also of course the loss of limb which occurs as a consequence of foot ulceration. So the five key elements in um, uh, prevention, foot ulcer prevention, is identifying at risk foot, regularly inspecting and examining this uh, risk feet, and educating getting the patient, his relatives, and also the healthcare professionals to uh, examine and to regularly monitor and follow up these feet. Ensure routine wearing of protective footwear um, or the, uh, so that the patient wears it regularly at all times, indoors and outdoors, and also treating risk factors for the ulceration. So for identifying the at-risk foot, the foot screening does not prevent TFU. It only identifies the at-risk foot. And we have to, uh, it also tells us whether there is neuropathy or peripheral art arterial disease. But definitely, uh, once the, these feet are identified, we can be cautious and alert. And absence of signs symptoms does not preclude the diabetic foot disease or neuropathy or peripheral arterial disease. Even the presence of the palpable pedal pulses, there may be peripheral arterial disease. And even uh, the foot of uh, neuropathic feet, I mean, the patient does not come so no examination is done. So if once we have identified the address feet, we should. Uh, it's easier for us to screen uh, in the foot screening. Once you have identified these patients, it's very easy to um, prevent and protect them. Foot screening, however, should be performed by trained healthcare prof professional on an annual uh, basis. And um, the uh, for the. Uh, Detection of the uh, protective sensation or the neuropathy, we use a standard 10 gram sem seam Swinston monofilament. And uh, this is uh, held perpendicularly to the feet. Examination is done for two seconds and uh, it tests on the uh, certain points on the foot, on the plantar aspect, and once on the dorsal aspect to see for the protective sensation. So uh, once we once there are it's two out of three questions, uh, whether the patient is feeling the sensation or not, if two out of three questions uh, are there, of which one of the touch will be a mock uh, touch that is uh, alternate touches uh, with the monofilament of the plantar or the of the contact surface of the foot then we can say that two out of three questions if they are unanswered or at two out of three places they cannot feel the sensation uh, for the biothesometer ipsivis test or the seams instant monofilament then protective sensation is lost and for the peripheral arterial disease uh, assessment we can take the cardiovascular history, palpate the pedal pulses. We uh, also do a um, Doppler signals, uh, ABI assessment, blood pressure assessment at the ankle and the brachial levels. And also, if we uh, if there's a doubt, uh, if the ABI is uh, low, then we can also go for the advanced investigation, such as duplex ultrasound or the DSA or the routine angiography. The uh, loss of protective sensation, neuropathy, and peripheral arterial disease, they are the predictors for the development of uh, diabetes. Ulcers. So, uh, identifying the at risk uh, food feet, it is um, these feet usually have abundant callus at the sites at the uh, elevated plantar pressure points. That is, the deposition of callus occurs at the sites of increased plantar pressure, which occurs due to the non enzymatic tissue glycations affecting the connective tissue of the feet, and which is less supple, less elastic. And at these points, slowly callus deposit this thick thinning of the plantar pad of fat and the thinning of the subcutaneous tissue. And these will at these will points, uh, the callus starts depo depositing and these high risk points, we test the uh, sensation and for the peripheral arterial disease. So uh, annual inspection is must and if there is, uh, if there is no loss of protective sensation or, or no peripheral arterial disease. Uh, but as we go higher up and uh, then the once the uh, these sensations are lost then the uh, we have to inspect more frequently so uh, we can see the various uh, risk at risk feet with the plantar fissures due to plantar cirrhosis autonomic neuropathy dorsal callus on the hammer toe which can be seen and um, also the blisters which can be seen on the feet these are the sites of irritation irritation by the footwear the crowding of toes which occurs as a result of motor neuropathy the crowding of toes which are the bent toes at both interphalangeal joints the hammer toe at the proximal interphalangeal joint more prone to dorsal uh, ulceration and uh, uh, so these these are the uh, tests of the monofilament which are demonstrating uh, whether the sensations are present or not and by the geometer to see for the vibration sensations and um, then the ipswich test and the tuning fork 
to uh, demonstrate to quantify the uh, vibration perception threshold we have the biothermometer even the heat cold sensitivity can be performed to see the areas of um, heat cold insensitivity the for the pad pedal pulses per palpation abi as i have said ultrasound and uh, we can see the uh, we have to regularly examine these at risk feet once they are identified and they are marked by the abundant callus or uh, the presence of a small ulcer here and there or a blister or any other pre ulcerative sign or presence of limited joint mobility and um, so this category 1 and 3 should be um, examined more frequently once in 6 months for this category 1 once in 3 to 6 months uh, for this category 2 and once for every 3 months uh, for this category 3 or even for previous amputation we can examine them every one or two months so we can see that the previous amp amputation scar and the previous ulcer scar and uh, these are the sites vulnerable sites for getting reulcerated and uh, we can see that uh, in great category 0 as i mentioned that there is no uh, lops and no pad and they have examined annually grade 1 uh, the category 1 lops or pad either of them are present with low risk feet grade 3 uh, category 3 we have moderate risk patients uh, in which there are other factors along with lops and pad in combination third is high uh, high risk where uh, either of these and also in addition to that previous um, amputation previous ulcer scars or end stage renal disease are present so then we have to go on increasing the frequency of examinations so we, it's important that we, even at the time of screening we should start educating the patient for self care and motivate the family and um, for this healthcare himself must have received a training and uh, self food care interventions are more feasible accessible low cost and prevent the uh, ulcer compared to no ulcer uh, compared to the no food care so health uh, um, these uh, periodic education must be con uh, structured it should be repetitive it should be more organized it should be conducted at periodic intervals to reinforce the education and the patient must have um, uh, self protection i mean uh, they should be knowing about the footwear the how to do the monofilament test for themselves if there is any during examination if they find any area which is um, uh, you know they see they can in consult the healthcare professional immediately and definitely they should avoid barefoot walking and always at all times they must be using the footwear because these are the sites of uh, elevated pressure plantar pressure and um, uh, they have to protect the feet against trauma or the any foreign body so uh, third recommendation is instruct a patient who is at risk of foot ulceration to protect their feet in the bare and uh, not to walk while for protect them uh, even not to use only socks only socks or not to even use thin soled uh, slippers or any open footwear for which they may be vulnerable whether indoors or out there they must wear a standard diabetic footwear and the footwear should should accommodate the deformity should also accommodate the areas of excessive pressure and it should be the middle it should be half to 1 cm uh, half to uh, half to 3/4 inch more than the longest length of the longest length of the uh, toe in the foot and also width wise it should accommodate the at the metatarsophalangeal joints and uh, also it should have provide a good room for the all the toes to move so the shoe uh, it should const, uh, consist of uh, it should have a seamless inner uh, lining and outer lining it should have extended strong heel counter to contract trauma it should be made of soft leather the inner should also be very soft and padded and the insoles should be should help in the pressure redistribution and um, uh, there you, you should prefer a shoe lace uh, footwear with the accommodative toe box we should allow the proper movement of the toes so therapeutic footwear are the footwear which are worn uh, they are not the off the shelf shoes they are called to the custom uh, they are the custom made ones which are usually are worn after any ulcer uh, while there any active ulcer is there or there is any ulcer scar or there is any to amputated toe so uh, we can uh, use them also as off loading footwear now the um, it's very important to encourage remind and tell the person with diabetes to always examine the foot on daily basis especially the at risk feet uh, risk feet uh, category 1 to 3 to inspect daily the entire surface of both the feet and inside of the shoes before wearing prior to wearing them wash them daily and dry them especially in between the toes use emollients to lubricate the dry skin but not in between the toes and cut the toe nail straight and avoid use uh, preferably use a filer avoid cutting the corners and avoid using strong chemical agents or any plasters or any corn caps uh, 
that they should be uh, better avoided now um, it's also important to provide these education in a structured fashion just now i had discussed with you and uh, about the appropriate food self care for preventing the foot ulceration and also they should self monitor the foot skin temperature with the infrared thermometer or the digital thermometer once per day to identify any early signs of inflammation or any pre ulcerative signs and this will prevent the very first or the recurrent foot ulcers however the trend temperature jo it should be examined consequently uh, consecutively on the two days uh, on the two consecutive days and if the temperature is high and there's a diff- in similar regions of the feet there's a temperature difference then we should ask the patient at home itself to restrict the ambulation and immediately consult the specialist whenever the uh, opportunity is there now the uh, patient at risk moderate risk for foot ulceration who has healed from non plantar foot ulcer we should advise therapeutic footwear the as modified or the custom insoles which are made of plaster zoot poron eva mci which had redistributed the in, uh, elevated plantar pressure at the high at the vulnerable points and also we should um, take a, a pedopodogram foot scan plate if the facilities are available to see the exact site and we should try to reduce at these sites we should try to uh, reduce the pressures below 200 kilopascals there should be 30% re- uh, reduction in the uh, foot pressures after wearing these foot uh, insoles and it should be demonstrable then uh, routine routine wearing of appropriate fe- uh, footwear is also uh, uh, important and uh, certain toe supports or toe orthoses are also available to help reduce abundant callus build up in patients with diabetes on the tip of the toes on the dorsum of the toes especially in the toe deformity patients then silicone is a, uh, a time tested or even maybe a padded or foam uh, can be used to separate the toes and while dressing the uh, foot also i use uh, gauze to separate the toes and um, for the hammer and the claw toes also we can have the silicone supports now uh, we should ensure, ensure that routine wearing of uh, appropriate uh, footwear should be there in patients with the heel foot ulcers on the or the amputated toes uh, they should encourage the patient to consistently wear them and uh, in the charcoal foot which is painless painful foot uh, sorry painless foot uh, non operative condition uh, but it resembles an inflammatory foot and uh, we should immediately uh, refer such patients to the podiatric or the orthopedic surgeon or the experts who are tra- uh, who can treat this complication it needs immediate immobilization and um, because it can lead to deformities if not immobilized early so we can see this deformed uh, foot in the early first week itself and they can lead to rocker bottom or the chronic charcot foot which we can see here and um, once this deformity occurs then it's more liable to ulceration and uh, the presence of callus may be seen at high elevated plantar pressure points and also the bony protrusion rupture of plantar fascia can occur if there is too much elevation of plantar pressure and uh, uh, dislocation instable joints and subluxation of the joint may occur bony reabsorption and fragmentation may occur in charcot foot leading to deformity and instability and formation of the ulcers at the elevated plantar pressure point so now we what we do is the serial contoural contact casting to reduce the formation of deformities and reduce the chances of uh, getting a foot ulceration and once the foot is already was push of the patient to ankle foot arthritis the minimum patient to shifting the patient for ankle foot arthritis is usually 12 weeks and cj plaster casting every chest uh, every 10 days to 14 days we can change the plaster till the x rays uh, they show the uh, reduction of the exudates and the bony fragments so these are the healing shoes and the cross splint or the best shoes for the various type of arthritis feet depending on the site which is uh, showing the elevation we can use the wedge or the um, lateral wedge or the anterior or posterior ortho wedge the customized afo to support the instability at the ankle and, and pre- prevent it from deforming as we can see treating the risk factor of ulceration uh, any pre ulcerative sign presence of any infectious uh, infections or any mycosis in the nail or the web space infection will help to prevent the they have to be addressed antifungals have to be started and onychomycosis has to be treated to prevent a foot ulceration even the ingrown toenails they can be treated by uh, proper foot care and maintenance of the foot hygiene to reduce the nail jabbery and also uh, reducing the fungal load on the nail a good glycemic control early recognition and treatment of osteomyelitis can prevent amputation in a foot like this where it was having a peronychia and when neglected it went on to have a bed gangrene and consequently the toe was lost so prevent uh, amputation in such patients by giving early recognition and having a good glycemic control prevent the limb loss 
So surgical intervention and a person with uh, where there is a failure of the non-surgical uh, treatment, and you know, despite shaving the callus every time, the or the ulcer on the apex or the distal part of the non-rigid toe, then we can do for a uh, percutaneous flexor tenotomy for the toe deformities, and also for the you know plantar fascia release for reducing the formation of the forefoot ulcer. Further, if the patient uh, fails to heal uh, with the plantar forefoot ulcer, fails to heal with despite non-surgical treatment, we should also consider for a tendo Achilles lengthening. We can see the reduction of the uh, plantar pressure um, after the uh, performing the tendo Achilles lengthening procedures. We can also perform the Geller gap arthroplasty so as to reduce the pressure at the metatarsophalangeal joint, metatarsal osteotomy to release the forefoot pressure by cutting the metatar incising the metatarsals. Clotro by the girdle stone procedure we can for, consider for the uh, relaxation at the uh, interphalangeal uh, and the proximal interphalangeal joint and the metatarsophalangeal joints. The, similarly. The prominent metatarsal heads can be resected or the pan metatarsal head resection can be considered uh, so as to reduce the prominent um, uh, metatarsal heads and causing the elevated pressure and making it prone to ulceration. And mallet correction to reduce the uh, deformity at the dis distal interphalangeal joint with the flexion deformity, we can do a FDL tenotomy, flexor deuterium longus tenotomy. So uh, we, however, uh, recommend uh, nerve decompression procedures should not be recommended. And uh, although they, um, especially in patients with IW, GDF, risk score two to three, and in patients who are having excruciating neuropathic pain. Related exercises and weight bearing activity, these all these they improve the uh, range of motion at the ankle, also decrease the elevated plantar pressure and decrease increase the foot and ankle um, elasticity and range of motion with the aim of reducing the um, neuropathy symptoms and also increasing the mobility of the foot and uh, also the pressure reduction at these points. And also we can communicate uh, to a person with diabetes who at low or moderate risk of uh, ulceration, great risk uh, category one and two, uh, that increase in the level of walking related exercise, weight bearing by a small level like 1000 steps per day is likely to be safe. And uh, especially in the weight bearing uh, patients, advise this person to wear appropriate footwear because definitely wearing a footwear will reduce the uh, pressure uh, to by 200 kilopascals at those uh, vulnerable sites. And uh, frequently monitor the skin temperature after coming from home from a walk and to also observe during foot care and regular foot care for the pre-ulcerative signs or breakdown of the skin. Now, uh, providing integrated foot care, which includes uh, which includes the uh, adequate knowledge about the uh, footwear, structured, uh, structured education about the self-care and uh, professional advice and also uh, regular follow-up of the uh, such feet, especially in the risk category three patients, uh, we have to, this is to prevent the recurrent foot ulcers. And um, uh, it focuses on regular visits to the podiatrist and other members of the diabetic foot care team so as to uh, prevent these ulcer and also prevent the recurrence of whether for a first time or whether a recurrent ulcer. So uh, our goal is not necessarily to prevent every wound, but we should uh, have maximum ulcer-free, hospital-free days by each reducing the number of complications of each wound recurrence. And there are, uh, you know, uh, they, they are mainly focusing on the maximum ulcer free, free days, integrated foot care, self-management activity, um, foot behavior, therapeutic uh, footwear, using of therapeutic footwear on a regular basis, adherence to the protocols, which are, uh, which are told on every um, follow-up visits to the patient. And if necessary, go for a prophylactic or a reconstructive foot surgery so as to reduce the deformities and the elevated plantar pressures at these sites. So uh, to summarize, those low, those at low risk or zero, zero are considered to be very low risk, and we have to do an annual examination for signs and symptoms of um, uh, of uh, to assess whether there is development of protective um, loss of protective sensation or peripheral arterial disease, and uh, to see whether the risk is increasing. Uh, low to moderate, uh, um, or that is category one uh, or two uh, risk patients, we have to instruct them to have 
undergo more of foot mobility exercise and monitor skin temperature and wear uh, on weight bearing basis uh, we have to increase the level of walking and in, you and ensure that you are wearing a footwear at those times moderate risk for grade 2 and grade category 3 and category 2 we have to self monitor the foot temperature use a therapeutic footwear at all times and if uh, as as advised by the professional if necessary customized footwear in soles and avoid nerve decompression procedures definitely and for risk category 1 to 3 we have to screen for the uh, history of uh, previous ulcer previous amputation end stage renal disease and progression of any foot deformity or a callus preoperative signs and we should uh, adhere to the therapeutic footwears or the uh, regular footwear inspect the footwear and uh, to care uh, preventive care of the foot ulcers use orthotic interventions so as to reduce the abundant callus and treat the uh, preoperative treat them uh, the knee grow toe nails fungal inter address them because with the regular foot care we can diagnose them early pick them up early and we have to address them as early as possible to prevent the diabetic foot ulceration with the very high risk patients uh, we have to pay we have to focus on regular therapeutic footwear and also prevention of recurrence so integrated foot care here is very important and we have revaluation of follow up at regular intervals thank you for the patient hearing